Hi, this is Noah Vauder at The Pirate Ship, and today I'm going to show you a little bit about how to develop guitar effects with the FV1 DSP development environment. So, what I've got today is my trusty red guitar, and we've got a guitar amp hooked up to it. This is the FV1 development board. As you can see, I've put it into this uh, plastic case and put guitar jacks on and added a guitar preamp. Now over here, this is my laptop, where I'm running the FV1 development software. So to start off, I wrote World's Simplest Program. Uh, you can see it only has two lines. There's an Ardax Adcol and a Rax Dacol. Uh, I want to translate that for you. What this first line is, is this means to read the audio input. The audio input is called the ADC, and in the FV1 language, uh, the ADCs are called ADCL and ADCR. So that's the first thing we're going to do is read the left input, which is where I've got my guitar plugged in. Now let's look at the second line, Rack Stackle. What this does is it takes the value that we just read that's sitting in the accumulator and it writes it to the digital to analog converter. In the FV1 chip, the audio outputs are called DAC L and DAC R. So right now I've got the output of my kit here going over to my amp. So let's start off. Let's uh, press the A button up here to assemble the thing. And we could see a little bit of status goes by. There it's done. It's uploaded into the board. So now let's see what we get. As you can see, the input from the guitar is coming straight through uh, from the amp. Now let's mix it up a little bit. Let's do something slightly more tricky. I'm going to add a multiply instruction here, times knob zero. Now if you look at the kit, you see that it comes with uh, three different knobs here, zero, one, and two. What we've done is we've said, First we're going to read the audio input, then we're going to multiply it by the value from knob 0 or pot 0, which by the way ranges from 0 to 1, and then we're going to write that out. Uh, let's see what the effect that has. So first I'm going to assemble, there we go, and now it's written over to, uh, to the, the double EEPROM chip. Let's pick up the guitar and see what happens. Starts off at full volume. Now we can turn the knob down a little. Oh, we turned it down too much. It's too quiet. Turn it up a little bit. And then turn it up more. Okay, so that's a useful piece of code, but let's try and do something a little more challenging. One of the nice things about this environment is that people on the forums write little code snippets and then share them with each other. So even though this language is pretty complicated to program in, you can cut and paste segments of code from other people. So this is a piece of code from uh, the forums that's right on the front page. And you notice it says distortion on it. It's a cubic type of distortion. I'm not going to go into the detail of how this works, but let's just test it out. I, uh, our program now looks like this. We read the input, we scale it by the volume, then we run this little distortion algorithm, and then we write it back to the output again. So let's compile this, and then we'll run it. Actually, before I compile it, I'm just going to play that chord again so you can hear what it sounds like before we distorted it, okay? It sounds something like this. Now we press A. It's not extremely distorted because that's a mild distortion algorithm. But you can see that we're starting to add something. And now just to show you how interesting and modular this, this system is, we can take this whole entire algorithm right here and we could just put another one right in series and this will affect the sound a little more drastically.
And of course, we can still scale it by uh, with the knob here. So if we start it off really quiet, we could still see that the sound is kind of clean as we turn it up a little bit. We're starting to get some of those distortion artifacts. All right, so now what we're gonna do is let's just add another one of those over in series again. In fact, let's make it super distorted and let's add two of them. <laughs> Sound may not be recognizable, but that's okay. This is a soft environment. We can make whatever changes we want and keep the ones we, we like. Okay, so obviously we've just started off here, uh, showing you the very basics, and the art is all in the coding here. The more clever algorithms you can come up with, the more you can uh, express yourself and, and make unique sounds. So it's really worthwhile to um, get yourself one of these kits, because you don't even necessarily have to write things yourself. You can just uh, trade algorithms with people and adjust them. All right. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little tutorial and uh, catch up with us next time for...